Well, we gotta get this thing going. I've got a file over here for this. I uh, thought about using their rapid PLA crap, but then again, I hate the smell of PLA, and I don't plan on using it. So I don't want to smell it, and I don't want to calibrate this printer for PLA. I don't use PLA. So go ahead and we'll, we'll turn this thing on, and you're going to get started with this once we do. Um, basically, um, I'm going to go through some stuff here. I'm going to do the bed leveling and all that. I'm going to let it boot up. I love how they put this stupid thing on here so I get to take the screen protector off. Um, I like to leave the screen protectors on everything. I'm not the guy that enjoys pulling that crap off of there. Uh, that is some kind of weird crap. I like the plastic on here to protect it because if they ship it with it on there to keep it from getting scratched up, that means it scratches. So, but they put this nice little label warning on the damn thing right here. You know, you used to pay for these. People used to pay for this stuff for their cell phones back in the day. So I like having this here to protect the screen. But no, they had to put that stupid thing on there. So anyway, um, our manual will probably tell us a bunch of different things. Um, it uh, screen setup, a print leveling, etc. There, there's quite a bit in this manual about the print leveling and all that. The auto leveling procedure is basically you need to manually level this before you auto level it. That's what that kind of goes to. Um, I'm seeing what they say in here, uh, print head installation, grease instructions, um, auto leveling, when first running the machine, the distance between the platform and the nozzle needs to be calibrated. The leveling, which is about the thickness of a piece of A4 paper. When the printer is on, select level. Okay. I probably should pull that filament out of there because I, I don't want filament to be leaking out of here while I'm trying to heat the nozzle. So, okay, returning to zero. Hopefully, it doesn't slam into the print bed or something stupid. Okay. So what it says here is um, um, press level. Okay, so it's reading all of these things that say zero. Uh, when the printer is powered on, select level. Each of the access of the printer automatically returns to the home position. After entering the level pa page, place a piece of paper between the nozzle and the platform and click the compensate value to adjust the distance between the nozzle and the platform. We probably could use this, uh, but let me see if I have some typing paper. I, I know I have stuff laying around, but um, yes, let's use my tax return. That would be great. In fact, I'm glad I saw that because I realized, eh, I need to take care of that. You definitely don't want to use a QSL card. Those are quite thick. So, um, a piece of paper from a flyer from a hand fist. Yeah. Okay. But we don't know if this bed is level yet. The bed's not even heated up. So that's kind of stupid. But well, let's just go ahead and do it. We're, we're quite a ways.
thing even moving? Man. So. This doesn't look right for me. And I can't see very well. So let me see here. Let me see if we can get in here. The light. I can see the nozzle. And it really. looks like it's really far all right so I had to go quite far is a negative 1.160 which is nice about this is we can do that I love it okay and I might be able to like go up one more I'd, ra I'd just rather have it like a little bit too far than too close, you know? Okay. I'm gonna leave it yeah, a little bit too far in case one of these corners is up high or something weird. So, and then it tells us after we do that to, um, uh, is, uh, what? Push and pull the A4 paper when the friction is generated, the center point calibration can be completed. Click on auxiliary leveling. Okay. The method of auxiliary leveling in G is to adjust the distance between the nozzle and the platform by rotating the hand nut below the platform. That's fucking stupid. Um. Why would they want you to do that first? Okay. So, again, you have to calibrate the, each of these. Okay, so this is kind of more like old school method. So it's going to go to the home position. Please click the number or the icon for the auxiliary leveling. And it, it's got the yellow springs in here. So we'll go here. Put our paper there first, just in case. See, that's too tight. Okay. I'd rather err on the side of caution and have it too loose. I can always adjust later on. So I like to go back and forth, back and forth a few times. And it really doesn't take much. Something smells really funky. 
in this uh, printer, which I'm not 100% sure why. Because there isn't, uh, the, the heater's not on, nothing's on, but it stinks, it smells bad. I was supposed to be able to do that. Come on. Yeah, it's a little loose, but we'll just leave it like that. Uh, auxiliary leveling is complete. Please confirm auto leveling immediately. Confirm. Okay, so now that we've done that, um, And they want, they want you to be able to, they want it tighter than what I did. To where you can pull out but not push in. The auxiliary leveling is complete. After completing the leveling, enter automatic leveling for automatic calibration. The machine will enter the heating state. The nozzle is heated to 140. The hotbed is to 60. Please preset the hotbed temperature according to the temperature of consumables to achieve a more accurate leveling value. It actually looks like it's heating pretty quick on the hot end. Well, maybe not. So, now we just wait. So, I'll be back in a minute. Alright, so it's getting ready to do something. Uh, let me see what it say. Well, it's at 60 and it's at 140, which is what it says. So, it should be doing something any minute. Don't feel very warm for 60. Here I am getting grease all over. Is heating? Please wait. Well, you're already at 61 degrees out of 60 and 140 out of 140, so do something. So hopefully I have a better experience with this one uh, than I did with the uh, Ender 3V3 SE. Uh, that printer tricked me in the beginning because I thought that it was working. Boy, what is this thing doing? It really uh, seems to be just sitting here. Okay. It's almost like the screen kind of timed out. So now it says it's leveling. So we'll see what it does. What I do like about this printer is it has the dual stepper motors in the back with the timing belt at the top also. these numbers mean on the screen. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, they just, it's not showing the actual number. There's just 36 points it's going to check. So six by six. You can tell this thing moves pretty fast. So I've seen lots of videos on this. I have never seen anybody uh, upload the information about this, like showing what it does. They just like kind of skim through it. But I'm going to bore you guys to death with 36 points of uh, leveling. We're at 16 right now. 17. 
and 18 and if you can see the screen here you'll be able to tell so we're basically halfway and after it does this it, what it tells me here is it says um, Um, it says it's 121 point, but after the leveling is complete, set the Z-axis compensation. So uh, apparently the first one was not the Z-axis compensation; it was more of uh, I don't know something else, just the Z. So uh, after. After it's done, we'll set the Z-axis compensation and place a piece of paper between the nozzle and the printing platform. Click the compensation value and push and pull the paper to complete the compensation leveling when friction is generated. Then click the save icon to save, and if you don't do that, then you just did all that for nothing. So let's see, where are we at? We are... Um, pay attention to the distance, there's big red marks. Uh, between the nozzle and the bed. About the thickness of a sheet of A4 paper, this is what it says on my screen, can be adjusted with the Z offset. Okay. And we need to click confirm. We can see all our numbers. Negative 2, negative 2, 0, 1, 0, 3, 0, 0, negative 2, 0, 3. All the numbers actually look pretty good. So, our highest number is, um, our lowest number is negative zero nine, and the highest number appears to be point zero three, or something like that, yeah. So, all the numbers on here, they look pretty good. Let me see if I can... show you. Yeah, see? So, this is, uh, you know, when I had that ender, oh, it was so bad. And they were not good. I mean, this is obviously pretty good. Okay, so, what I just need to do now, then, is get the Z set again. So, we'll see. I have a feeling. It, it looks pretty good. So, we're going to go down a little bit. Am I going in the right direction? It's right about here. Let me go back up one. It's weird, it's like it's changing, I think. And I just want to make sure that we're not going to be too close. I'd rather go in and come back. And adjust it again later. Okay. So we hit the save icon. Save and restart to apply. Okay. All right. Saving data. Click the save icon to save. Okay. Note, leveling sensor only detects the metal platform plate. For example, replacing glass platform for leveling will not produce detection effect, which will cause the nozzle to squeeze the platform. See, because this has an inductive probe, if you try and use a glass bed, it will not, it, it, it won't work right. And, and that's why I don't like these inductive ones, but whatever. So, okay, so, we're going to put our thing in here. I don't know if I'm even doing this correctly. We're going to put our thing in here. And we're going to go here. We're going to click print. And we see all the stuff on here. 
Um, okay, I've added this calibration code. 25 point confirm. 10 minutes, it says. Okay, we need to load filament. Oh boy. Uh, I didn't even think about it. So, um, it's got to heat up first, so we are going to need to change some of these things. if it'll let me I know what I put on the G code so why don't we do this we'll go ahead and hit stop yes cancel okay we'll go into settings we need to uh, so, mm, it won't let me touch it okay um, you need to load Yes, I don't want to print. Lord have mercy. I really wish I knew what the hell this stupid thing was doing. Alright. It will not let me adjust the nozzle temperature. I need to load filament, which means that I either need to Heat the nozzle. Are you serious? It goes up one at a time. Okay, ten. Alright, and I do about 228. Yeah, that sounds good enough for me. So we're at one seventy. Eight. This thing heats pretty fast. Um, we're at 200. I should be able to just go ahead and push a little through. Why is there green stuff in here? Green? Why would there be green? See, like, I almost wonder if this has been used. Hmm. So we saw green come out. So if you had one of these and yours had green filament come out when you uh, went to go use it, uh, leave a comment down below. Um, I didn't inspect it very closely, but, I mean, that's green filament, and I'm using black. So, obviously, they ran something through this before, or somebody used it. And like I said, the box looked suspiciously like it had been resealed. So, I didn't see any real evidence of anything, particularly, but, I mean, I, nothing surprises me. I've bought lots of things on Amazon that were said to be new that were not. So, okay. So we're good to go there. And apparently the Okay, the I'm wondering how I um Okay, let's turn that on. Okay. All right. So I think I may or may not have hit resume for this print. So Confirm whether to perform 
Okay, cancel. So emergency stop. Okay. Well, I just want to resume. So let's see if it does anything. Okay, I am going to confirm to stop because it's not doing anything. And okay, well now we hurry up and we'll hit print. We'll go back in here because what happens is it starts to cool down real fast. So we hit print. It's dropping in temperature quite rapidly, which is annoying. So we get to sit here and wait around some more. So, and it keeps giving me this 140 degree number, but unless I missed something uh, here, there is no reason this thing should be, we cannot print at 140. There's no way. Settings. What in the hell is this stupid thing doing? If it tries to print at 140, that's going to be screwed. Okay. So now it says 235. I don't know why it showed 140 first. So now it's going to sit here. Here's some more of that green stuff. It's going to sit here. I can't even pick it up. Oh, damn it. Now it's stuck in between here. Alright, so... We are at 232, 233, it's starting to move, um, 236 and 70, and I don't know if it's printing or what it's doing, I can't see. It did, it, that is weird, it printed a test line right there. Alright, look at that. That's looking good. Let me see if I can get this tripod to go apart. Keep you guys a better view here in a second. Okay. Sorry about the excellent video. Okay. So this is a bed level test. Uh, I believe it was specifically for this printer. I found it online. Um, double lines. It looks really accurate. Um, the hell, there's a triangle back here? So, I believe this is specific for this printer. Unless this was already on the disc, I don't think it was. Um, I, I don't recall that being on the one I downloaded. Uh, other than that, it looks identical. Let me go take a look over here. Nope, I see it. It's in there. Um, now, this file is... Let me go here and look really quick. I can tell you what it is. Uh, okay, I'm trying to find where I got it. Uh, I was on this website called Yegi, and... It says, uh, Yegi takes you to, apparently, printables. I don't remember downloading it from printables, but it's on printables. It says a simple single layer square grid test to test the bed level across an area. And it says, um, it, is not specific to this printer. They're talking about Prusas and uh, 240 millimeter by 200 some other crapola. Anyway, so you guys can see how quick it just did that. That is nuts. Um, I have never printed one that quickly. I mean, not even close. 
like this is like not done but it's just like literally done the whole entire outline in like uh I don't know what the lapse time is um three minutes three minutes so usually it would be like 15 or 20 minutes for me to print one of these holy hell I mean, this is pretty fast so it says it'll be done in 10 minutes it's 24 percent right now so what we're, we're wanting to make sure is just everything comes out perfect on this before you test any prints and do test benches and all this other crap like why would you just print something in the middle of your print bed when you get a brand new printer and I see it every time that's what these people do they don't do one of these. They don't check to see that the bed is okay. They go print some stupid benchy in the middle of the print bed and go, oh, this thing works great. You know, and then they got the printer for free from whoever. You know, that's the other problem, too. We get all these shills on here that just want to get paid. And so they tell you that this is the best printer ever. And then in the next video, they tell you, don't buy this printer, buy this printer. Um... And one guy was like, oh, don't buy the KE, buy the SE because it's no good. And then he tells you in another video, the KE is so much better than the SE. And I'm like, well, which one is it? And they don't ever tell you that some of these printers have certain problems. Well, they just tell you they're great. Or they tell you they're really bad and they don't know what they're doing. So you just never know what the hell to do. So I'm hoping maybe I can help somebody here. You get a new printer find a test bed uh, print, print that first make sure that all this looks good if it doesn't look good, well then you don't even have it set up right in the first place look if there's tear lines in here you know, if, if these squares look like crap or you end up with a mess on the end of the tip you're not set up right yet and that's okay because these things are a pain in the butt and if you're new, and I am, I'm new, there is a huge learning curve on this. Um, you know, some of these guys have been doing this for 10 plus years, you know, and they were, you know, around when this first started. I uh, remember, like, when they first came out. In fact, I saw some at the Ham Fest yesterday. Some of the, they were kind of like a, a Prusa style, like, you know, some of them, like, had pieces of wood like balsa wood looking stuff that was glued together with screw inserts and then another one had like plexiglass but they all had the rods and everything you know they looked like a prusa and he wanted like 20 bucks a piece for them you know like i looked at them and they're like none of the parts on them look like anything i could use so we have like some lines in that one back there um I can see some lines in here. I don't know if it's just the way that it's printing. Let's see if I can zoom in here. Okay. So you see right there, there's like a little bit. And I mean, this is uh, pretty good. I think I have the Z offset just a, a little bit on the uh, conservative side because I don't want to scratch my brand new print bed because I, I don't want to have to buy one again. Especially because this is a, a, a really good one. And this is just like the one that I bought for the Ender. So I think it sucks is these don't have the locating pins in the back. So yeah, we can see that there's... Almost looks like maybe the print is supposed to be this way. Um, and then I don't know what the settings in the slicer might be, so maybe my lines aren't wide enough, um, you know, where it's laying down. Um, but it looks like they're consistently the same. So, uh, and I don't think I'm too close, and I don't really think I'm too far. Uh, maybe I am too far. Maybe a little squish would get rid of the white in between. Um, I'm not sure, but 
I, I am actually kind of surprised uh, that it's working this well. I see the filament holder kind of wants to bind a little bit up here. So, um, I'm not sure how I'm going to actually rig this up to run a little spool next to it, but uh, I think uh, maybe just, uh, you know, run it off the back of the spool holder, maybe um, print some kind of piece, you know, to redirect the, uh, the filament holder, I don't know. And, uh, and it depends on, you know, um, how well this thing works, because if it doesn't shake the gantry, then I don't really care if the spool is up there. Um, the only reason that I would do otherwise is to keep my spool in a dryer while it's printing. And that would be nice to be able to do. So it says that it's 87% with one minute left. And I'm not sure what it's going to do next. I think maybe fill in all those lines that are double. Um, this is 89%, 90, 90. Yeah, I don't know what it's doing now, I can't really see. Um, my cable is dragging on the print bed though, so we're going to have to address that issue I guess. So it's about done. This is 95%, no minutes left. Zero hours, zero minutes. I'm not sure what it's actually printing. A third line through these. This is what it looks like. So I guess uh, maybe I make a couple more adjustments and um, print something else that I know what it looks like. I don't know. Apparently that is done. So we get 11 minutes. Okay. So maybe we're ready to print a speed benchy. We'll be back in a minute.